Welcome to the SPAC and Kill uh, Tuesday, April 11th Board of Education meeting. I am Mary Sawyer, the Vice President of the Board, standing in for our President, Dan Kohler, who is, could not be here today. Uh, I would like to um, ask you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. We have now on our agenda the opportunity for public comments on the consent agenda items only, and we are removing the items 9.01. 9.02 and 9.03 that have to do with the budget tonight um, at this point because we are having a budget presentation we will add those items in and you'll have you'll be able to comment on those items after the budget presentation and so now i would like to hear a motion or i'd like to hear if you have comments um, for those agenda items except for those ones i mentioned Any members of the board have comments on the consent agenda items? No. No. I don't have a question or comment. Well, a brief, just brief comment. I'm happy to see the trips that, that are on the um, agenda for both the baseball team, Cooperstown, and uh, the music program to Boston. Um, just happy to see those trips. I know it's been a little while since. The baseball team went to Cooperstown. I'll we'll have you see that trip back. I just had um, two. I had two questions. Um, one is for agenda item nine point oh four, and that was just um, I see it's for um, getting uh, improvements to our auditorium, and I just wanted to um, learn just a little bit more about that the auditorium. Um, so. And, so with our auditorium, um, the, uh, what do we call them? Those, um, oh, the fly bars. bars. Thank you. Ken, you better be on standby here. The fly bars are antiquated and, and unsafe to use. And a few years ago, uh, we stopped using them in, in, in a stationary one was installed but it really doesn't allow us to do really anything modern uh with plays so what we've decided to do is is get quotes and, and we got a pretty good quote to make them movable almost like the old you know you yeah. pull them up so uh for set designs and things like that uh it'll be uh basically modern and safe uh, we were kind of using a way we we're using them i don't know steve don't don't say a word but we're using them in a way probably shouldn't have uh and you know we really thought about it and said let's let's do this right so that's what that's about okay excellent i fully support ken did i say that all correct yeah all right thank you ken uh is very much it so is steve but i know ken kind of spearheaded this as he's very much into theater and uh um you know kind of headed the project to, to make sure we can get it right. Okay. Great. Thank you. And then I had one question on um, agenda item 9.05. I just wanted to, I, I can't remember, have we used them before? Is this yes. kind of yeah. a routine yeah. thing? Okay. Yes. 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 You've heard of them as MAG, okay. the acronym, uh, you know, the Management Advisory Group, we call them MAG. They've been with us for what? Uh, how long you been oh, here? Probably Your about time five here? years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, it kind of triggered my memory, but I was like just trying to make sure it was the right thing, um, the thing that I was remembering. Great, thank you. So any additional questions? Okay, so hearing no questions, do we have a motion? A motion to approve the consent agenda items with the exception of 9.01, 9.02, and 9.03. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
it's unanimous. So now we move to the presentation? Yes, we move to our budget presentation. All right, uh, we have a, oh, okay. both uses up first, and yes. I think, uh, Jason, you want to introduce someone here uh, before you begin? I do. Thank you for having us, first off. Good evening. Uh, before we present our 2023-24 budget, um, I want to introduce uh, a new candidate for the OCS board, uh, Anne Quinette Hales. I'll tell you a little bit about herself. Thank you. Thank you so much. And good evening, everyone. So as Jason said, my name is Anne Quinette Hales. I'm a candidate for BOCES board. I'm a resident of the city of Poughkeepsie. And a fun fact, I'm also a graduate of the BOCES New Visions program, graduate of Poughkeepsie High School. Um, during my senior year, I took AP courses in the morning and I went to BOCES in the afternoon. And um, I know that all of you on the board have already received my candidate letter, so it kind of talks and highlights my resume. Um, but just I've, I've been going to some of the board meetings and sharing my story about the experience and being able to broaden my horizons prior to actually entering into the workforce. And I think that that's the benefit of the BOCE system. And I, I champion the Technical Institute as well as uh, higher education because I'm also an adjunct at Dutchess Community College currently. Um, and so uh, I believe in what BOCES has to offer our students, your students, and it is my hope to serve on the board and serve this district as well as so many others as well, um, and also continue to advocate for our students because I'm a member or I'm a member of this community, so to speak, um, Hudson Valley, and I want to see that the students in this area are able to have opportunities not just in higher education, but also in the Technical Institute and be competitive with um, so many communities that surround us. And so that's my hope and my goal. And as my girls who are four enter into kindergarten this year, um, I would like to just have a stake in what happens with them and build a legacy for them to be a part of. So um, that's a little bit about what I hope to accomplish and a little bit about myself. And again, my resume did circulate um, prior to me coming here and introducing myself, but thank you for this opportunity and thank you for the work that you're doing for the families in the Spack and Kill District. And so at, at this time, if there are any questions or comments, I would love to entertain that. But if not, I thank you all for the opportunity to again come here and introduce myself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, and Quinette gets to hear the budget for the <laughs> ninth time. <laughs> she, she could probably do this presentation. <laughs> so I'll probably turn over the mic. So uh, good, good evening, Superintendent Fanuelli, members of the Board of Trustees, back in the Free School District. Uh, I see some familiar faces, and that's nice, and I, I do appreciate that. A, a few of you came over for the tour of our new facilities, um, thinking just what a beautiful night it is. And I was actually on the agenda a month ago, and I think we were snowed out. So let's think about that, <laughs> how much nicer it's, it's becoming a month. Uh, but I'm here really tonight to present the administrative budget to the 23-24 uh, school year. I always like to start by just giving a really high-end uh, overview of the accounting structure of OBOCES. I think of it as really three uh, major budget categories. There's the administrative, uh, which is going to include the retiree health insurance, uh, capital and rentals. I'll talk to that tonight. The programs and services is really what I think most of you think about when you think of BOCES. That's our special ed program, our current technical institute, um, all the things that are really based on participation from the districts. I'd like to remind everybody that there's a return of surplus at the end of the year. We don't carry a fund balance. It's a simple equation. We take what we collect from the districts. We subtract our expenditures. Uh, what's left over gets returned to the school districts. Important to remember, we want to we want to end with a surplus. We don't want to end the other way. That becomes a very difficult situation to have with the school districts. And then also a reminder that um, you know your participation with BOCES, there's an incentive from the state, and that generates a BOCES state aid. But I'm really going to focus this on the administrative piece tonight, which is retiree health insurance. Why is that important? That's important because it's based solely on the participation of the 13 component school districts. And it's the one budget in BOCES that we have that what, the amount that we vote on, we're restricted to. We cannot increase that budget amount. 
with the program and services, participation may increase in the school districts. It may go down so that budget can go up and down in the school year. But this one we're really locked into, so we need to get it right. And then uh, similarly with capital and rentals, um, once again, it's all it's all the 13 components in Dutchess County that contribute to it. This is really just a uh, a pie chart of all our, our services uh, at, and our budget at, at BOCES. It's about a $100 million operation. I'm going to speak tonight between about 12 o'clock and maybe 1 o'clock or 1.30 there. Um, that's that's the administrative piece. That's retiree health. That's the capital rentals. Uh, you can see, you know, maybe between 2 and, and 6 o'clock is our special ed program. Uh, Career and technical is just above that in the yellow. So we do we do a lot of, of various services, and we do have about twenty percent of cross contracts, and that's when um, per, perhaps back and kill comes through us, and then they may use a, a BOCES that's outside of the accounting because because they have a service that we don't provide. So administrative is really simple. It's um, it's the cost of really the you know my business office, the board of education, uh, superintendent, secretary. Uh, the board clerk, um, all those items that are there. This is this is our budget for uh, the administrative piece. Um, it's 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 just under 1.8 million dollars. It's just under a nine percent uh, decrease from last year. It all appears to be very good news, but I'll show you in a couple of slides that my struggle is really with the revenue. I would like you to to look at the 900 uh, transfer and budget lines there at the bottom. We have a lot of different programs in BOCES and they're all really their own little set of, of, of accounting records. And there's a lot of um, services that provide other services to the other programs and coasters in the agency. So for example, um, everybody has to participate in the facilities and operations. So everybody has a little expense there. But what we realized um, was that with the administrative budget, the burden has been falling on the 13 component districts in Dutchess County. However, we do a lot of services for school districts that may be in Ulster or Orange County. And what we've done is we're, we're gonna, when we, when we uh, do a service for them, if, you know, if that was a thousand dollars, whatever the, the service they was, we're gonna add a 10% administrative fee on. And we're taking that 10% administrative fee and we're gonna bring that in from the various programs and services and bring it into this budget to help us. And that's why you can see there's a pretty substantial negative number there. We think that's only fair. We don't think the burden of this should all lie in the 13 component districts in Dutchess County. By law, the retiree health insurance comes into the administrative budget when a person retires. So my example always is there may be a special ed uh, teacher that worked for the district for 30 years. While they worked at the BOCES in that role, the, pr the program covered the cost of that health insurance. But when they retire, it all comes into the retiree health piece of it, or the retiree health piece comes into the administrative. Um, I think it's done because programs and services sometimes end or begin, and that, and that would, there would be the fear that the, the program gets discontinued and who would be able to cover that retiree health insurance at that point. What we see here is a little bit more good news as well. We're down uh, just over 7% from last year. We participate in the uh, Dutchess Educational Health Insurance Consortium. They're in the process right now of adjusting the Medicare rates. BOCES has approximately 325 retirees. 88% uh, of those are, are Medicare eligible. They're over 65 years old. So we've actually seen a little bit of a, of a decrease in the rates um, for them moving forward. And this side just slide just simply combines them both. You have the administrative piece, um, which I spoke to before, and then the retiree. And we're coming in at just under a 8% decrease budget to budget heading into 23-24. So now when we look at the funding side, how do we support these budgets? It's the it's the contributions from 13 component districts, faculty field being one. And there are some small other revenues, things like interest income and maybe some uh, some sale of you know some things that we do, but very minimal. What we have here is our billing to component districts is about five and a half a million dollars for 23, 24. And that unfortunately for the districts is up just under 6%. You can see that the other revenues is down uh, almost 50%. We at the BOCES had a retiree uh, health insurance accrual that's been in place for, for several years, probably in excess of 10. 
And, uh, you know, the, the auditors have said that we need to get that at a one-year level. And that was overfunded some time ago. So we've been in the process of using that, but we're really running out of money with that one. We're, we're kind of approaching the cliff. So I think we'll probably have one more year where we get to utilize that. And then we're really going to be off that. And it's going to be all um, component districts contributions. <laughs> when we look at the, um, you know, the actual contribution for SPACCO next year, we see a, it's a little far for me to read. I'm going to go to my sheets here. Uh, but we see a, an overall decline in the Arwada in the county. Um, it's down about $1,600. Arwada resident weighted average daily attendance. It's a state uh, aid generated number. It's a, it's in my opinion, it was it was a, a law created to use this number to divide the, the contributions among the districts because it's non-arbitrary. It's something that's based on the on the information that's submitted from the districts. So no one could look at the BOCES to say that, you know, we were showing favoritism to one district over another. SPAC and kill is down in our water, but you're not down as, as, as much as the county is. So you actually need to pick up a little bigger piece of the pie this year. So you're looking at just about just under a 9% increase there, about $19,000. <laughs> Uh, now I'll move to the capital and rental. I think it's important. I think yeah, I think this needs to be included, although this is not really voted on uh, as the administrative piece. I think it's important to know in the equation. You can see in the rental of schools, uh, a very substantial decrease there. We're down to $75,000 uh, for 23-24. We're ecstatic to be out of the alternative high school on Route 44. Our new building is open, so we've eliminated that rent. But we are never going to eliminate uh, all our rent because we have in-district classrooms in the county. Spack and Kill hosts uh, such classrooms for us. So that's actually, you know, uh, money that we need to collect from all the districts and then we pay it to the district. So, And then when we look at the capital, um, we had traditionally been charging, I think, for about five years, $600,000 a year. Now we looked at 21-22, we reduced that to $250,000. There was a decision made that the districts were contributing substantially to our $36.8 million project. And we really didn't have a lot of other projects going on at the time. We were really concentrating on that. So we reduced that to 250. We brought it to $600,000 back up last year to where it was. And now we're asking to move that another $400,000 up to a million. There were some alternates that were missed. Um, in the capital project. One such example is really the lower parking lot. If you come over to the to the campus, you'll see that we didn't we didn't pay that. We lost some kitchen equipment. We didn't get our, our print shop um, renovated like we need to. So we're really like to try and go after some of those projects as well moving forward. So we put those two amounts together. I think we're just at a uh, just under 10% decrease budget to budget from last year. And then really this is, is this is the same equation that we use for the for the contribution for the administrative piece of the budget. It's based on the same ROI figures and SPAC and kill for 23, 24 is down in regards to this just under 7% or about a $3,500 decrease. <clears throat> I kind of like to recap, uh, you know, the, 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 the SPAC and kill participation with BOCES and what it generated. So, for 22-23, uh, based on the 21-22 expenditures, uh, we returned a surplus of about $450,000 to SPAC and Kill. Uh, it generated $1.3 million in BOCES aid. Your book of business with BOCES SPAC and Kill is about $4.8 million. Um, 4 million of it with Dutchess BOCES, about, about $800,000 with other uh, uh, BOCES that we call cross contracts. Just a, a couple pictures. Um, it's you know it's it's been a long run. I think we broke ground just after the pandemic in 2020. We we do appreciate the support of the component districts. But we're very excited. These are some before uh, pictures, and now we have a a really a nice space, a nice building. It was meant for education. The alternative high school on 44 never was. It's they're very well lit rooms. I like to just highlight there was never a gym on Route 44. Uh, there was never a cafeteria. Uh, we have a nice, a nice library now. 
at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Jason. He's going to talk about um, you know your current participation now and uh, some of the um, some of the programs you have coming forward. So I'll just show them all for you. Mm -hmm. I'll reiterate what Matt just said in regards to uh, the support of the capital project. So uh, very uh, a lot of deep appreciation and thankfulness for that. Um, and if you have not had the opportunity to come down. Uh, please give me a ring or give Matt a ring, we'll, we'll take you around. Uh, and I know his last slide, so I don't want to steal his thunder, but Saturday will be our expo, 9.30. Ribbing cutting, and then we'll, we'll open up the campus just for uh, self-tours, and then we'll also have guided tours as well. Uh, currently, and I think I shared these numbers a couple months ago, um, SPAC and Hill 11 special and alternative ed students. We have three in Salt Point Center, eight in district and currently you know, 33 career and technical institute students. Uh, this year, I, I would say growth in the programs such as welding and fabrication uh, grew tremendously. Uh, we added uh, CNC machinery into that to really align it with uh, the new mechatronics lab that's opening up at Dutchess Community College uh, next year. Uh, we intend on growing those CNC machines uh, we had a generous donation from Haas Equipment. Um, auto grew expansively this year. Uh, and our expectation is it's going to grow over the next couple of years. So we will be uh, facilitating a partnership with DCC along with Toyota, Honda, Lexus, and Acura. Uh, and using some of their curriculum to train technicians uh, for those automakers who are in desperate need. Um, we also added a uh, HVAC program slash plumbing uh, in addition uh, to a fashion program uh, that launched. Uh, we were lucky enough to get an instructor free, uh, straight from New York City doing a great job. So that program is expanding. Currently, we're at about 620, 25 students. Uh, right now, looking at our, uh, our uh, student population, for 23, 24, will probably be around 715, 720. Uh, so those are probably one of the higher numbers of the last eight to 10 years. Uh, so big thanks uh, to our components. Um, we're still working on the work, we're growing. We still haven't gotten it right. I don't know if we ever get it right in this industry, but um we're trying to listen a little more and, and really tailor programs to the needs of our components you're going to see some new coasters and services coming out uh we are partnering with junior achievement um in regards to early career exposure you know that's been an important priority for a lot of our uh, component districts getting career exposure at the early grade starting from grade three and up um so we're doing a partnership with junior achievement around that um we're also working around mental health services uh, so we can have our components go through. I know that's been a priority uh, in addition, and we've been working pretty hard at the state level advocating for dual enrollment to become a COSER. And we are extremely close. Um, we got a very positive email today from the commissioner's team uh, in regards to uh, their belief that it should be COSERable. Uh, so I think we're inching ever closer to dual enrollment being a coaster and districts being able to get some money back on that. Uh, and that's really due to the hard work of uh, your board and our component boards, uh, as well as our superintendents who have been advocating and we're now going on about six months, seven months, well, um, and uh, <laughs> making progress inch by inch. So the patience has been wonderful. But we're getting there. So knock on wood, I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, so again, Saturday, April 15th, big event. Please, please, please come by. Um, and again, thank you for your support of the Capital Project. It, it, it's, um, it's ours. And I, I mean that, uh, I truly mean that. Uh, we have a beautiful conference space <laughs> that we've walked our component soups through and some board members. It is yours. So events, things of that nature, please let us know. We will host it there. Um, uh, we'll be more than happy. We haven't had a space in over two and a half, two and a half years. So uh, we're excited about that. Thanks again. I appreciate it. Be happy to answer any questions or if um, 
you think of something after this and uh, my emails there if you'd like to reach out to me but uh, and if you do it get the opportunity saturday we're really looking forward to it um, so if you want to come over and take a look we welcome you thank you thank you do we have questions Get off easy. I don't, uh, I'm running. <laughs> no, thank you. I know. I know the hard work you put in for the building. I know how hard it, it's been. I know we've had meetings there, and we've seen the stages. So, uh, uh, how would you say you're? Where are you? Ninety percent done? One hundred percent done? Where, where are I you? think we're just on punch list items, and okay. I think they did a lot of them over um, the break last week. And I think the other the stuff now is so small. I think we're just going to take some credits on it. But there are a couple uh, excavating items, or I should say the excavator has to do them. I think there's some sidewalks that need to be redone, so I don't think we're going to get to that till the summer. But I, and I thought I'd never say this, but I think I've almost conceded it right now. <laughs> so I, I, really I think we're pretty close. Yeah. 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 I know all the mistakes, but I'm not going to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so, so much. All right. Have a great night. Thank you all. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Okay. We now move to the item 10.01, the superintendent's budget presentation. So we have another presentation. So uh, I'm really excited that our, our, our audience came today to see the two budget presentations. Uh, but uh, it's actually good uh, to have... A, a lot of teachers and staff in the room to actually hear about BOCES. I think that, that it's very educational. I think it, it's a good thing that they came. I'm glad we rescheduled them. Uh, this presentation, you'll see that it does have two dates on it. So uh, to be fair, this is the exact same presentation that we gave on the 28th. I'm going to do it a little bit quicker than the first time. Um, but, you know, after we go through this and answer questions, we will be voting on adopting the budget. So... Uh, that's why we go through this twice, so that we have uh, time to uh, digest. So the first two slides, this would be in one of them, is just, just the agenda for the presentation. So this is what we're going to cover, um, you know, uh, for tonight's presentation as I go through. I'm not going to read it to you, but you can kind of get a guide uh, of what we're going to do next. And this, is, this is really the numbers part of it that we'll get into. Uh, but let's let's get into the uh, the presentation. So we have conservatively budgeted our state revenue forecast in this budget. Right, you always want to be conservative just in case uh, the uh, what the state gives us is less. Um, I think Val very much agrees with that philosophy. Right, uh, we don't want to have surprises. Um, our reserves are still healthy, uh, and that is definitely a plus. And our controller's fiscal stress report is positive. So these are all good news. Um, this is, you know, we, we're in good shape heading into this budget. So we also talk about, you know, what we're doing here at Stack and Kill and, and what's going well, what we're looking uh, forward to doing next year uh, before we get into the numbers. We talk about Stack and Kill and some six successes. Um, so uh, one slide here that has really come about uh, ever since the pandemic is, you know, the Stack and Kill District's constructional response. So if you look on here, we do have summer and after school programs. We're going to continue them again. Uh, one of the main things is the Summer Academy, uh, which now will be, I think, going into its third year. Um, and we are continuing that. Also at the bottom of that slide, our Virtual Tech Academy, which is really some PD, has been great. There's probably many people in this audience that, that took part of that. Um, and we're going to run that again also. And that was very vital during the pandemic when we switched over. Uh, a little bit to remote, but we still find it very vital and our teachers are still kind of utilizing technology in different ways. Uh, so we definitely continue with that um, as, as we're moving along. A couple other things that are happening uh, is the AVID program here at Todd is in full swing uh, with uh, grade seven, next year grade eight. And then uh, the year after that will be grade nine at the high school. So next year the high school will have a planning year, but then the year after It'll be there. And the Positivity Project has been going very strong. Uh, it's our K-8 initiative. And that, you know, we, we talk about that often here, but that has been really a, uh, a very uh, positive 
uh, response to what we've seen um, in uh, from the pandemic, but also uh, there was an article recently, I think it came out yesterday in the Kitchen Journal. We read it as administrative staff today uh, and really felt that some of these responses has really mitigated in a better way here than at other districts because uh, we might have uh, jumped out ahead of that. So um, we're definitely proud of that. What are the responsible decisions? So we want to definitely have a budget that's going to allow us to have our program, but we also want to present a budget that is fair to our taxpayers. So uh, we're looking to present a budget that is under a tax cap, and that definitely happened this year. Uh, we want to provide a budget that reduces the possibility of significant negative fluctuations in the future. In other words, you don't want to go really low one year and then come back super high the next. We'd rather try to keep it as, as similar, uh, but, you know, changes within reason, but not jumping, you know, 5%. Uh, maintaining a student-centered learning environment, communicating the academic successes, which we'll do here today, uh, continue to promote the economic vitality of our district, and seek revenues elsewhere, which mainly comes from our outer district uh, tuition program. District success, so this is this is cool. Uh, Niche uh, basically ranks the county, and uh, they have ranked the Spacky Kill uh, School District uh, the number one in Dutchess County. Um, it also places in the top three of 10,000 ranked across America, and they've also ranked uh, Spacky Kill as the best place to live in Dutchess County. And uh, right in the middle there, Second Kill schools appear to be the gold standard when it comes to education in Dutchess County. Anytime someone says that, we'll definitely take it. Um, so uh, that stood out to us uh, when, when this came out. This was recently, this was about a month ago. Um, so that's, uh, we'll definitely take that. Next. So many other items that are happening. Uh, the district is an 11 year winner of the Utica National Safety Award. I think we're getting that next week. Um, so that should be nice. Uh, it's one of the, since 2012, one of the best communities for music uh, in education. Um, the high school is in the top 5% of 18,000 high schools in 2022. Scholastic Arts really highlights a lot of our students' uh, artistic ability. And for the first time, and for the, the first time, time a district in New York State was recognized by Project Adam uh, for our district's preparedness for cardiac arrests and AEDs. And we're actually, we'll be having, we hope for next presentation, uh, our, our head nurse, uh, Liz Jean Casper will be here. We'll, we'll talk more about that on that day. Some other district successes uh, here at Todd, uh, the Science Olympiad uh, did very well on the March 4th competition. Um, our, uh, our public uh, athletic teams have done great, really, which is something we're proud of is the Scholar Athlete Team Award. Um, so every varsity fall sports team received that, every team. That's awesome. Uh, we know about our varsity team winning the state championship last year. Um, our volleyball team won this won the section. And then uh, some, some titles there for uh, our, some of our other teams. And the Varsity Boys won the Sportsmanship Awards for the second straight year. Uh, Odyssey of the Mind here at Todd continues to do well and did well again this year. Um, some of our students played Carnegie Hall, right? How do you, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Go to Spackenkill. No, I don't know. Practice, 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 right? Isn't that right? Um, and... Uh, some of our students uh, did well in the academic world quest competition. Spacky Kill Real Estate. So uh, we spoke to a local realtor uh, just, just within a month. Um, and she had said the median price in Spacky Kill increased year over year by 2.7%. And that at you know 375K this year is higher than the median price for anywhere uh, in the town and the county. So the houses in our area are, are worth more than other areas. One of the revenue streams we have is uh, the tuition and enrollment. Um, so you could look on there, we currently have 33 students uh, utilizing that. And you could see uh, 
what the cost of, of tuition is per student, and then the total is over uh, 400,000. Shifting over to the budget overview. So this is a good slide to look at. This is really an overview of the entire budget. Uh, the first line is what we're proposing this year. The second line is what it was last year. So the third line is the difference. So you're looking at, uh, you know, 15, uh, 1,500,000, which is a 2.99% increase budget to budget, but the tax levy increase is 1.66. So we actually, the tax levy could have been higher, but we felt that this was a good, good place to be. Um, so we are under the tax levy by about 328,000. In the case of coincidence and us trying to not to avoid fluctuation, these are the exact two numbers we had last year. Um, not so totally by design, but we're just trying to be consistent and it just worked out that way that these are the, the same numbers um, as last year with the percentages. Some of the budget implications, uh, we're looking to replace two transportation vehicles, replace the facilities department vehicle, add a social worker, uh, add point four music, point two foreign language, and continue to expand the pre-K program. Most of the, uh, you know, the key cost budget drivers, right? Word driver, what drives the budget? You're really looking at, you know, the, the total cost of these drivers that are all here is 85% of the 51.9. So salaries, health insurance, budget, you know, the retirement, debt service adds up to 85% of um, of the budget. And what we would say basically, right, Val, th th these are locked in. Right. A lot of that is out of our control. Yeah. So 85% <laughs> of the budget is already determined and then really we... <laughs> All the hard work is over 15% of the budget to figure out uh, the rest. Do you want to take over, Val? Sure. You could split, split duty tonight? Sure. Um, this is the capital reserve that we've been talking about. Um, we want to establish a capital reserve that we that the district can use to pay costs for renovations and upgrades without going to borrow money through bans and bonds to finance that project. Um, the capital reserve must be established with voter approval and voter approval is also needed to expend money from, from the reserve. Um, again, it's one of the primary purposes is to reduce or eliminate the need for us to borrow funds and incur all the expenses that come along with, with borrowing money. It also provides the district an opportunity to save for the future. Um, we know that there are going to be things, you know, year to year that need to be addressed, and this will give us um, a reserve of, of funds to pay for that. This reserve will be funded at the end of every school year from any any um, excess funds that are left over. So any unappropriated fund balance will be used to fund this. So it's not increasing the budget. This will be just this will be money that's left at the end of the year. We we're asking for this reserve to be funded up to $10 million over the course of the next 10 years. So whatever monies are available over the next 10 years, we will use that to do the reserve. One of the key parts is we do know that uh, buses have to be switched over to electric buses, and that's a tremendous amount of money to do that. Um, I doubt if this would even cover that, right? Is that even, however, it does start us on the way where we could start to um, do any, any projects we need to do to set ourselves up for the proper power sources in order to charge you know a fleet of buses so this is just a piece of that but it, it will give us a leg up to get started before we probably have to do something uh bigger down the line this is the actual wording of the proposition as it will appear on the ballot in may again it states the purpose of the reserve and it states that it will be funded over the next 10 years up to a maximum of $10 million. This is the overview of our levy. Um, the big numbers here is the maximum levy that the district could have imposed to support the budget was a little over 32,800,000. 
which would have been a 2.69% increase over the previous year's budget. However, due to increased amounts of state aid, the levy imposed to support this budget is only a 1.66 increase over the prior year. Um, as Dr. Fannie Willie said, this is exactly the percentage increase from the prior year and supports the district's effort to keep levy increases at a moderate rate and to avoid large fluctuations either up or down. Um, we are required to present a three-part budget, the three parts being the administrative program and capital. Um, the administrative budget is approximately 13, 14%. Yes, I'm looking at it. Uh, Yes, 10% of, yeah. of the budget. Um, program is, of course, the lion's share. That's all of our instructional programs um, for staff, for BOCES, special ed, and transportation. That's the lion's share of the budget of almost 75%. And capital is for debt service, um, the purchase for the buses, utilities, insurance, those kinds of things. And that's approximately 14% of our budget those percentages stay pretty steady year to year. Also by law, we are required to present a contingency budget in the event that the voters do not approve the budget as presented, the board has a couple of options. We can rework the board, we can rework the budget and put it up for a second vote. We can either resubmit the current budget and try to convince the, the uh, community that this is the appropriate budget for the, you know, to support our students, or we, the board can adopt a contingency budget. And basically what a contingency budget is, is the tax levy from the previous year cannot be increased. So we have to reduce the budget to match that reduced tax levy. This is the actual calculation of a contingency budget. Um, the levy for last year was a little over 32 million, and that's the levy that we will be locked into for a contingency budget. In order to do that, we would need to reduce our proposed budget by a little over $500,000. And in order to make those reductions, we would eliminate any budgetary items related to equipment. We would eliminate the transfer to our capital fund, and we would have to reduce supplies by a little over $46,000 in order to meet that contingency budget. In summary, <laughs> Dr. Fanduelli's budget of 51 million nine, we could have imposed a maximum tax levy of 32.8. However, to support the budget, we are proposing a tax levy of 32.5, which is 328,000 and some change under the maximum levy allowed. In summary, vote. So the vote is on May 16th uh, from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. It's at the high school uh, in the auditorium lobby. And uh, we'll be voting on three things. One is the budget we just explained. One is the capital reserve we just explained. And also there is a board of education trustee term that you will also be voting for. Um, so this will be three things uh, when people come to vote and these are the three. There's also a link. We'll go to it now. Um, so if you were if you were to access this uh, on our website, you can then click on that, and that's a link that takes you right to all these documents. You could just also just go to the website and go to business department and find it also. Uh, but then you could go back to the previous slide. You know, the last slide says thanks. And are there any questions? But we'll leave up the, the when the vote sign slide. So are there any questions? I have a question, boys. Um, not so much about the budget, uh, more about the open trustee position. When is the deadline for the nominating petitions to be submitted by uh, new potential candidates? Uh, Sandra, jump in, but I believe it's Monday. It's Monday the 17th, 17th, 5 p.m. Okay. If somebody's interested in the Board of Education uh, trustee position, uh, who would they contact to get a nominating petition packet? They can contact me, but the information is also on our website under the Board of Ed page. Okay. The candidate packet is, is online, and then they can print it out. And as long as they 
you know, had their 25 signatures and everything that's required to do, they definitely need to hand it in by five o'clock on, on Monday. So, okay. And uh, Sandra can answer any questions if, if, if someone out there uh, would, would like more information, they can just uh, call Sandra at the district office also, you know, if they want to talk to a person as opposed to just do it online. Sure. But then they would actually hand it in to Sandra by five o'clock on Monday next week. Thank you. Good question. Any other questions? I've got a couple. Um, uh, one is uh, just a matter of timing. When do you expect the brochure that traditionally goes out to residents to? to so we can't. We can't send a brochure until the board adopts it. So uh, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, <laughs> however, well, I know it's not going out yet. So however, it is. It's, it's poised. It is poised it. and ready. It's poised and ready. It'll come out shortly. It will come out very shortly. Yeah. Um, like I said, once you adopt the budget, all these budget numbers will be included in that brochure. Yeah. So therefore, you know, we need your. Uh, we have not hit print. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing. Yeah. We have a draft, but not, not print. So uh, hopefully, after today, we'll we'll hit print tomorrow. Good. That's um, a good question. And I just would uh, offer the comment that you know it's uh, I thank thank you for the work that you've done. I know it's a you know a big undertaking, uh, one of the biggest undertakings you know for the whole uh, school season, school year. So I appreciate all the work that's gone into preparing these numbers and um, <coughs> nice to see the, the consistency. I think the consistency when it transits into a low annual increase uh, is a virtue and it reflects um, uh, sound management, I think, uh, responsible management, uh, kind of prudent uh, kind of, uh, oversight that I think uh, we all look for. Uh, in preparing the budget, so I'm, I'm really happy to see that. I think our residents should be pleased to see that as well uh, of our entire community. I think the capital reserves, we've spoken about this at prior meetings, the capital reserve is really a well-timed and, and sound idea. Uh, it should provide us some stability and some assurance going forward. Uh, so I'm uh, happy to see those uh, those things come together the way they have. So thank you again for the work that you put in. It. It's a sound thank you. budget. Thank you. And one that I'm happy to be able to support. Thank you. I'll just kind of echo some of Richie's comments. Um, I think that one of the easiest things for the school district is voting for the budget um, because of the way it's presented in so thoughtful a way, and also because of the value of this school district, not only financially, you know, an argument can be made for the, you know, the value that is adding to property, but also when you look at all the hard work that this district's administrators and teachers put into building this uh, community, beginning with positivity project, but beginning with thinking really deep in the weeds about affecting every student. And I think that that's, it replaced, that's not, you know, you can't replace that um, and so a district with a budget that you can support all that good work is really, that's what makes it really easy to vote for. And um, I think that a poorly run district or a district that is not, that's just looking at finances is one that's, that's harder. But for us, I feel that we, our value is right there in the accomplishments and the, the, safety of our students and the care that our teachers and our administrators are placing with that. So you're really safeguarding, I think, um, our school community. And I think that a budget uh, is a pleasure to vote for when that's the case. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so that is so that is our second of our uh, presentations today. But we do have a third. Oh well, before we go, thank you. Yeah. So now we'll we will now have a motion um, to approve the following agenda items on our consent agenda: nine point oh one, nine point oh two, and nine point oh three. Do I hear a motion? Do we need a public comment first? Oh. Oh. 
Does any is there any public comment on the items of the budget that we're discussing? Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's important. Yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. So um, there we I asked for a motion to approve the consent agenda with the with um, the following agenda items 9.01, 9.02, and 9.03. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Passes. All right. Now we can move on to the uh, to the third presentation. Um, what people might not know is what was approved in the consent agenda was a long list of tenure appointments that we're very proud to celebrate tonight. Um, we're going to, they're already approved, but, but you have to stay until we finish talking. Uh, but technically, I guess they could walk out. Uh, we are approved and we have another presentation uh, for tonight to discuss each and every one of you. And I think uh, Mr. D'Souza won the, the raffle to go first. I think by being a rookie, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it is my honor and privilege to speak on behalf of Leah Tomasetti Moradian, uh, who is a third grade teacher here at Hagen. I uh, feel very fortunate to have gotten to know Leah over the past two years, and I can honestly say she's an amazing person to work with, but more importantly, an awesome friend as well. And if you know my history as football coach and many battles and championship games, she may be the only Marlboro graduate I've ever said that about. <laughs> and now that I met her husband, it might be too. So, <clears throat> no, she is a really an amazing friend and colleague. As you can see, we quite got a contingent of uh, the whole third grade team and her whole weight mate, uh, Mrs. Forlix, in the, in the house. And that just shows the, the family that uh, she's a part of and uh, they all support her and love her, and she's a great addition to our to our building. And tenure is a big thing. Uh, it's a highly valued achievement in a school community, and certainly at Spag Kill. And it represents a level of commitment and dedication that goes beyond mere job security. Uh, it's a symbol of a teacher's ongoing contributions, um, the development of our students, and the wider school community. Uh, and Leah sets the bar for this contribution every day. Leah loves teaching. She loves kids. You can just tell in every interaction you have with her, this is what she was born to do. Uh, she is one of the most driven teachers I have seen. Her humility drives her to learn and grow every moment she gets. Her perseverance drives her to be her student's big, biggest advocate. Her optimism drives her to shine that positivity in every facet of school life. And her purpose drives her to make her students not only achieve academic success, but ingrain in them the valuable lessons that make them better people. She has an innate ability to make her classroom feel like a home and her students feel like family. Uh, I am appreciative and honored to be her principal. Every time I walk past her room, she's doing something that draws me in. It's probably like, oh, this guy again. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I think it, again, stems back to her love for children. Even during the summer, uh, I had my daughter Olivia with me for part of the day and uh, I was trying to get something done, and that's hard with your daughter. But she was like, you know what, I'll take her. And she didn't have to, no obligation. She was setting up her classroom, and she just hung out with Olivia. Um, and Olivia's not someone who just goes off with random people, but she was just in love with Leah and wanted to do everything. And other teachers joined in that party as well. That's just who she is. Don't ever lose that. that that's going to get you through the hard days. Um, so I asked the third grade team, I don't know if you knew this, to, for some commentary. Uh, you didn't. Uh, well, then you're in for a, a great surprise. Uh, because we're at Spank Hill, there's no doubt we all have a growth mindset. Dr. Fanuelli's dream here. Anyone can learn the skills it takes to be a good teacher. However, some develop it, uh, their, their lives to ability to, dare, to deeply care about children. They have the it. Leah is one of those people. It's like she walked out of the hospital with a heart it takes to be a teacher. One of the first memories I have of Leah is during her demo lesson, a student was playing with a pencil on the carpet while she was teaching. 
Instead of calling the student out and stopping the lesson, she went to the student, put her hand out, and didn't skip a beat. She has a care, a deep care, caring for children that need a little love and patience, and that can't be taught. Another example of this you can see every morning at Hagen. With the hustle and bustle of the hallways, she makes it a point to say hello, do secret handshakes, and greet every child by their name. She asks about their interests, their families. Students from all classrooms adore her, and they make they, she makes them feel important. She's a wonderful role model as she's enthusiastic, hardworking, and passionate about teaching. Leah's first year at Spanco was also when the pandemic hit. Uh, she learned she had to learn like the rest of us how to teach virtually. The difference is that we had years of teaching under her belt, and she did not. However, she provided just as much support to her colleagues in navigating the difficult time as someone who had been teaching for 20 plus years. Her second year with cohorts showed the same determination to persevere through the challenge of teaching through a pandemic without ever taking one sick day. She's always happy to share a lesson, resource, idea, or strategy that has worked to help others. Mr. Farrell emphasized when we were hiring Leah for Leah's position that we should consider it to be a marriage. At the risk of sounding like a Hallmark movie, let's just say we can understand what he means, and we would choose Leah every time without hesitation. As a colleague, Leah is a team player. She's a cheerleader for other successes, and she's deeply invested in furthering her skills, and she fits in the building so much that we don't even remember time when she wasn't there. We know that Leah feels grateful to be here, but we are truly the ones fortunate to have her. As Leah would say, she does say this a lot, not for nothing, <laughs> but we are excited to see what her future is back to holds. Congratulations and on an amazing accomplishment and well-deserved. <laughs> All right. Um, so um, I am very excited to talk about four um, NASA employees that are receiving tenure, uh, three teaching assistants and a teacher. So um, I'm going to start off with Jen Talent. Um, Jen is a teaching assistant at NASA who splits time between kindergarten and first grade with the majority of her time being an Alicia Lombardi and Tina Blasek's co-taught kindergarten classroom. Jen is described by her colleagues as kind, calm, dedicated, patient, caring, conscientious, and hardworking. I don't know about you, but when describing someone who works with kindergartners, that's pretty perfect. It's not uncommon for me to walk into one of her classrooms and see Jen working on reading, writing, or math. However, it's also not uncommon for her to be on the carpet, playing with Barbie dolls, blocks, or sometimes plastic bacon and eggs, depending on whether or not the kitchen's open. <laughs> the staff enjoys working with Jen, and her students absolutely adore her. Jen's position as a teaching assistant was especially important during the pandemic and hybrid instruction. During this time, there were days when she was teaching students opposite of the other cohort who was in person. And she was tasked with supporting her students not only with academics, but also their struggles with fear, uncertainty, and loneliness during an absolutely unprecedented time. This was not easy to navigate, and I will forever be appreciative of that. We are extremely lucky to have Janet Nassau Thank you for all that you do, and congratulations on your tenure. All right, so the next one I'm gonna split with uh, Mr. Doherty. Um, so Karen Sauer, who is currently a teaching assistant at Nassau and who works in a second grade co-taught special education class with Dina Zonka and Allison Crystalon for most of her day. Additionally, she works with students in kindergarten and first grade who are selected for a special program called Primary Project, which is a national evidence-based program that helps children in pre-K through third adjust to school, gain confidence, social skills, and focus on learning through play. Karen is described by her colleagues as proactive, professional, 
dedicated, intelligent, kind, and someone who truly, truly listens and relates to her students. Karen has spent the majority of her Spackenko career at Todd, but switched back to her elementary roots at Nassau this year. I've truly enjoyed being around her and I'm amazed at how she works a classroom as a teaching assistant. To the untrained eye, you would never notice all of the invisible things that she does. In the teaching circles, we call these least invasive interventions, and she is absolutely masterful at this. The work that she is doing with our students within the primary project can literally be life-changing, and I couldn't imagine anyone better suited for this position than her. Karen is a true professional that I feel lucky to have in our school. I'm going to pass the mic over to Mr. Doherty, because I know he has some words he wants to share. Yeah. So I, I asked if I can say some words too, Karen, because uh, uh, she's returned home uh, literally because she'd spent many years in this library uh, supporting uh, Eileen Cunningham. And when I came here, uh, Karen, you know, the first thoughts that come to mind when I think of Karen is patient, caring, and kind. You know, just so patient. Um, and you have to be when you when you when you're in a middle school. You have to be very patient, uh, not only with the students but with the staff. You have to be patient with, everyone. You have to be patient with the principal. Um, and you know she's been here. She was in, in the district for many years. Uh, you know you're an outstanding educator. Uh, you always care about the students first and chaperoning events. Uh, always responsible. Very level-headed. Um, the other home, which I don't think was your favorite home, was sometimes in the lobby uh, doing the buses after school. Uh, and you were always just someone who we can rely on. And, uh, you know, I'm so proud of you getting tenure, and I'm glad I had the opportunity to, to say that to you here. So thanks. Okay, so um, the last uh, teaching assistant in Nassau receiving tenure is Zoe Papadillo. Um, Zoe is currently a teaching assistant in Emily Martino's special education self-contained classroom. Previous to that, she was a one-to-one -one with a second grade student in Debbie Boyce's classroom. Zoe is described by her colleagues as motivated, intelligent, engaging, caring, proactive, supportive, dedicated, and fun. Emily Martina, who she works closest with, wanted to make a note in cap lock that she shares her killer dance moves that she does with the class each morning. One of the things that we take the most pride in in Spack and Kill is providing our students with the least restrictive environment possible, as I know Dr. Mulford um, speaks frequently about. The least restrictive environment is similar to the Goldilocks principle in that we are constantly trying to provide the just right amount of support for all of our students. The second grade student that Zoe worked with is a true success story in that he began at Nassau, but then was deemed to need more support and went to BOCES and was eventually brought back with Zoe working as his one-to-one. -one. I have no doubt that Zoe's positive attitude, dedication, willingness to adjust, and empathetic nature was among one of the biggest reasons that this young man is very successful. The following year, she was moved to Emily Martino's self-contained class, where there can be up to 12 students, all with IEPs in the room. This has proven to be a wonderful place for her as she helps to bring out the best in each of the students within that room. Regardless of the time of day or circumstance, when visiting her classroom, I am always certain that Zoe is all in with her students. Whether it's teaching reading or math, or feeding tadpoles, or letting butterflies go, or showing us all how to dance, she is 100% dedicated to her job and our students. Additionally, I am always impressed that even during the most challenging times, she always keeps a positive attitude and is solution oriented. We are extremely lucky to have Zoe at Nassau Thank you for all that you do, and congratulations on your tenure.
Okay, so the last person, um, Jay Curtis, who is a kindergarten teacher at Nassau, was hired at the beginning of the pandemic in 2020. Jay is also currently an assistant varsity football coach and our head modified baseball coach. Jay's colleagues describe him as positive, calming, dynamic, humorous, an outside of the box thinker, and as someone who consistently demonstrates integrity, character, and perspective. Jay brings life into the classroom in a way that is truly special. Whether it be teaching character, math, gardening, reading, mindfulness, or on a bad day, the New York Jets. <laughs> he really has his students hanging on to every single word. And that's tough to do in kindergarten. He is exceptional at developing positive and productive future citizens who will also have the skills necessary to learn and achieve at a high level. Many people don't know this, but Jay is a former college baseball coach. He's taught sixth grade, second grade, and first grade, and has also been an elementary and middle school principal. He has also been living with MS for 15 years, has had open heart surgery, and has run the Boston Marathon. It's my opinion that this is what makes Jay Curtis exceptional at what he does. He has pers perspective on, unique perspective on school and life that has truly, truly been earned. Jay embodies the growth mindset that you hear about from all of us, including tonight, and is frequently seeked out by his colleagues for support, advice, or just a good laugh. While Jay has only been at Nassau for three years, I truly can't imagine what the kindergarten hallway would feel like without him there. He was the perfect person for our school at the perfect time and has been an incredible presence in our building. We have all learned from Jay, not just from what he says, but from what he doesn't say and how he, and how he carries himself every single day. On a personal level, this presentation is extra special for me because years ago, early in my teaching career, Mr. Curtis, as an elementary middle school principal, took a gamble and hired me as a teacher. And for this to come full circle and to benefit the SPAC and Kill community makes this extra special. So with that, um, I would say we're extremely lucky to have Jay at Nassau. And thank you all, thank you for all that you do and congratulations on your tenure. <laughs> Uh, so I am uh, very uh, happy and proud tonight to be speaking on behalf of Jesse Murphy, uh, receiving tenure tonight. Uh, so, you know, some hires are um, uh, really special, and this has been a really special hire uh, for, I know, for the school, for the district, for your colleagues, especially when we're sitting next to you. Um, and... Um, you know, Jesse came from uh, Our Lady of Lords High School, so she was an experienced teacher. Um, but middle school is a different experience. <laughs> and um, to watch uh, Jesse um, actually very quickly adjust to middle school and to uh, fall in love with middle school students and uh, to watch that happen uh, has been amazing. Uh, in terms of her ability as a teacher, I mean, she is, uh, I, I actually, I remember your, your demo lesson like it was yesterday, you know, and uh, he just knew, I mean, very organized, everything is with reason, well thought out, you know, teaching math is very difficult, teaching middle school math is very difficult, teaching seventh grade middle school math is really difficult, and she has uh, just been an amazing teacher for us. You know, some of the words that come to mind, caring, kind, attentive, very high energy, um, highly organized, very thorough, uh, persistent. She's a great collaborator. 
Like I mentioned, she loves students. She loves teaching. She loves learning. Um, she has just been someone who has become an important person, I think, for a lot of, especially for Matt, you know, and uh, it's just been, it's amazing to watch. Uh, volunteers are time and talent, um, shares thing, you know, shares lots of things. She shares uh, jellies. She, she shares <laughs> things that she's growing in her garden. She shares all kinds of things with everybody. And um and it's just it's it's just been I, we've been so lucky to have you. Um, you are part of so many teams. You know, you're part of the data committee. You're part of the avid site based team. You're part of the safety team. You give your time, uh, and we know that time is valuable. And you give your time to the district and to the school. Uh, professional development. You are always looking to improve yourself. Uh, everything you do is for a reason. And then you follow through, uh, turnkeying things, helping colleagues, trying to just share what you know. Uh, you innovate. Uh, you uh, you know you every and when every time I'm in your classroom, uh, the students they're they're engaged. They um, you know and I think they the, how you feel about them they feel about you. So I don't don't you know they won't always say it, and they don't always show it, but it's there. I mean you can see it. And um, you've just been a real boost to the math department, to your colleagues, and, and to the entire school. You know, me and Mr. Cormier can rely on you for anything. Um, you're you're like like we've talked about many tonight. You're just you're an outstanding educator, and I am so proud um, to be able to be a principal, and also so proud that you're getting tenure tonight. So congratulations. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Congratulations to everybody receiving tenure. Um, I stand before you uh, as a very blessed and very lucky uh, high school principal. Um, I'm filled with pride and I'm filled with endearment uh, in terms of the people that I'll be speaking about this evening. Um, each person that I'll be saying a few words about um, at the high school have very different roles, um, but each of them are an integral part of why the high school is such an amazing place for, for kids. First, uh, I'd like to talk about Carolyn Lynn. Um, she is currently a TA at the high school. Um, she didn't begin her uh, career with, uh, with the district at the high school. She worked as a monitor prior at NASA. Um, she's also a community member of the community um, the, we've had three of her children come through the district. Um, Eric is the oldest, he graduated. Um, and then we have Edison and Elena uh, who are currently still at the high school. Um, Kellen is an incredibly hardworking uh, individual. She's incredibly dependable. She holds herself and the students to, to high standards. Um, she has also served uh, the district and not just the high school, but the other buildings as well uh, as a translator uh, for families and also for, uh, for students in the past, um, which has been an incredible service um, to the district and to those families. And I want to mention something that the district is very uh, proud of, and that is uh, in terms of the high school graduation rate, uh, we've consistently had the highest rate for students with uh, disabilities, okay? That is quite uh, an accomplishment. And um, the reason for that is a lot to do with Carol. She is just absolutely outstanding. And I have to say, our support staff are the foundation of our district. And Carolyn is absolutely the best of the best. And she deserves uh, tenure, absolutely. So congratulations to her. <laughs> Next, uh, I'd like to say a few words about Holden Maron. Uh, he's a course teacher, uh, both at the high school and at the middle school. Um, typically, I don't talk about uh, an observation that I do on a teacher, but I figured Tonight, I, I, I will. Uh, course at the high school starts at 
725. 725. You know what high school kids are like at 7? You know what I'm like at 725 doing the observation? In addition to that, he has about 70 students uh, in the class. And for those of you that have come to our concerts uh, and have seen the chorus perform, they're the best of the best. And if you observed him, you would understand why. This gentleman has more energy, positive energy, that just like radiates out of him that the kids just can't help but get involved. I mean, kids that I've seen sleeping in other classes later in the day after coffee <laughs> are up there actually singing and participating. Um, and he is an organizational genius as well because they have very limited time really to prepare for those concerts. Every second counts. Um, so every child in the class has a number and a volunteer every period goes to the board and the kids say the number, if the number's missing, the number goes on the board and that's attendance. So that takes just a couple of minutes. He is just absolutely amazing. And that's just the classroom part. You know, uh, you've come to our plays, our musicals, um, you know, School of Rock last year. This, this year we have Cinderella. It's actually coming up Friday, 14th, 15th and 16th are, are the days for that. And again, um, those are long, grueling, hours for the students and also for the uh, adults, the volunteers, everybody that's there. And without his sense of energy, uh, we wouldn't have the productions that, that we have. Um, but he doesn't stop there. He's always looking for ways to uh, enrich students uh, in terms of their interests. You know, so there was a trip this year to Carnegie Hall where students were able to perform. Um, and they had the opportunity to work with a world-class uh, conductor as well. Uh, another trip to Manhattan Bill College, um, where they were able to see a student-only performance of Damn Yankees. And they also had uh, a pre-show conversation and talk with a renowned professor, Beth uh, Burrier. Um, and then coming up still uh, on April 28th, I believe, is the trip to Boston where our students will participate in music competition and then also have an opportunity to kind of view uh, different sites there. So Holden is a very uh, unique and very special uh, person and um, the district is very lucky to, to have him, another person who absolutely deserves the recognition of tenure. <laughs> Have to start over. <laughs> so, um, sorry, I could help us. <laughs> so, just finally, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Ken Lewis, my assistant principal. Um, as a principal, um, your assistant principal is your right hand. In my case, he's both of my hands. <laughs> I don't know what to say, but that's the truth. I guess I'm just telling the truth up here. Um, it has just been my absolute honor and pleasure to work with Mr. Lewis. Uh, I have learned so much from, from you, from Mr. Lewis. Um, you know, I could go on with, uh, you know, words that characterize him. There are things like, you know, I've, I've talked to people, obviously, you know, just an excellent communicator as an assistant principal. It's a tough job. I'm glad I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> uh, you know, it's you got testing, you have discipline, you know, you have you 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 are constantly, constantly on with so many diverse different tasks that happen throughout the day, throughout the week, and throughout the year. And although those tasks are difficult, he does it by always being kind, he always does it by being genuine and compassionate and caring. Um, he just radiates a sense of putting a team together. You know, um, again, you know, he has to make decisions that are not always popular. That's with parents, it's with teachers. You know, we know that that comes with the job. 
Um, but I've never worked with an assistant principal um, that was more respected and, and loved by all the uh, constituents. And that is quite a, an accomplishment. Um, his door is always open, literally always open. The kids are going in there getting food from him or in the refrigerator or in the drawer. They, they adore him. And the reason that they frequent his office um, is because they feel safe. You know, they have, uh, they know that Mr. Lewis is there for them, that Mr. Lewis has their back. Even if Mr. Lewis had to at some point discipline them, uh, that's done with compassion. It's done with respect. It's done with love. And uh, that's why they will continue uh, to forever enter his open door. Um, Ken also likes to, uh, you know, provide opportunities for students to uh, be enriched. And as Dr. Fenuelli said before, um, you know, one of his passions is, is drama. And uh, he's organized and taken students to a conference, a nice tea is what it's called, where students from other areas can all come together with similar interests and similar passions and, and uh, learn from one another, and most importantly, have fun. Um, he takes great pride in his work. He is certainly a perfectionist. Uh, I don't think he's ever happy completely. Um, he's always looking to improve, and he's always looking to make things better the next time around. Um, and as an assistant principal, you are a leader, absolutely, and he leads by example, and he leads with impeccable character. Um, you know, he has made the high school environment have a true sense of, of belonging, of cooperation, of respect. Um, students, our faculty, you know, our parents, our community that comes to events, they feel, they feel safe. So um, he's also a loving husband. His beautiful wife, Darian, is here. He's a loving dad, Rhea. She's not in the car, right? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to mention that before. But, um, so just to wrap up, I mean, not only am I fortunate to, to work with such a great person like uh, Ken, um, but I've also gained a great friend. So congratulations, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> just to uh continue with ken a little bit you know as, as dealing with administrators uh first I'm, I'm glad there's no more people for steve to speak about uh, started to uh really get deep there no it, it's good uh, ken he mentioned something that uh, i think he said you're always looking to improve and uh that is something that i've totally picked up on um, your your ability to to and I mean this as a compliment to, to maybe know something you might not know and then go seek out and learn about it so then you could you know then have it in your arsenal and you really epitomize that we talk about growth mindset and and uh, even from uh, before you came to Spaffy Kill some of the examples when we talk in cabinet about things you know really has has struck with us of, of your introspective um, and I think that is uh, what Steve is talking about. A lot of the um, things that you do, I think, is based on that, that you're, you're constantly thinking of how to improve your craft, but also the high school and how to improve dealing with students and how to improve testing and, and how many calls you, you, you give me about testing, you know, uh, because your mind is always thinking. And that is a great thing. And I think that's really uh, led to a lot of what uh, Steve had talked today. So I want to thank you and congratulate you for tenure. I think finally also to wrap up on everyone who was on the list. Um, one of the traditions is uh, for me and often John and Lori to come in also is to meet with everyone as they are uh, before we officially grant them tenure. Uh, you know, I think they might feel a little worried about this meeting but i think once we have the meeting i think they realize why was i worried about that 
because uh, they're great human beings um, and, and that's who we've hired. And really, if they've, they've come across, uh, you know, the tenure process, you know, to get to meet with us, you know, kind of that last time right before uh, tonight, um, it's really obvious. Right? It's not like that meeting is going to decide anything because everything they've done is so obvious and that we've seen and, you know, our speakers here tonight really have to have shown that. Um, so, but it really is a great tradition for me just, just to talk uh, with everyone before this uh, because it, it, it's a great forum to be able to, to, to kind of, uh, you know, see everyone, you know, at least so you see everyone who's going to get tenure and then you couple that with, you know, just talking to other people, but just impressed, I guess, would be, would be the word I would use with, with everyone we talked with. Um, and really the conversations went all different ways, you know, from some personal things to um, all kinds of stuff um, that we've learned. Um, and really everything I learned is, is just, we have an impressive group of teachers. Um, I think we really work hard in the hiring process. And I think it really shows when you come down to uh, uh, offering tenure to everyone. Um, and this group is as impressive as any group I've seen. They still have to be impressive because they really don't get tenure until the first day of next year. Is that correct? <laughs> so they're going to have to continue yes, yes, yes. their impressive uh, nature. But we definitely want to celebrate them. And I guess in a few minutes, uh, you know, have some uh, desserts uh, together uh, and just congratulate everyone. So thank you, everyone, for all you do for Smack and Kill. And that concludes our presentations for tonight. I'll turn it back okay. over to you. Okay. So, do we at this point want, do board members have an opportunity to talk at this point or um, this? So I would say we're now switching over to um, public comment on non-agenda items and okay. board comment. On, That's on good. That. So we okay, would, so public definitely... comment on non-agenda items. Okay, do we have board comments on non well, Do we have any board correspondence? I don't think we received anything. We did receive one from uh, one of the candidates for the BOCES, Mr. Real. He mm -hmm. sent in a, uh, okay. a letter for you to review. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we'll be voting on that at the next board meeting on the 25th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, okay. Sam. Okay, comments from the board. Well, I, you know, I uh, certainly like to um, not draw attention away from uh, the stars of, of this evening by all respects, but I, I just want to offer some some quick words of appreciation. Uh, you know, the the meeting that we'll have in a couple of months' time, or maybe a little short, a couple months, where we say goodbye to the teachers who are retiring is always a very celebratory affair, but bittersweet. You know, because those teachers that we think so much of. You know, are leaving us, you know, at that point. But um, the counterpart to that, I think, is this this opportunity to really embrace and celebrate teachers who uh, who are going to be with us, you know, for a good long time yet. And the words that have been offered on behalf of your um, your mentors, your supervisors, your principals, and so forth here just speak in, in so many ways to I think what makes this district uh, such a great community. Uh, but it always reminds me that <clears throat> you know. Teachers are the lifeblood of our district. Uh, we, I think we all recognize that. And teachers are the means by which you know, our student body lives and breathes and, and is nourished in every respect. And, and so um, it's just uh, so gratifying and I'm so always appreciative to hear the thoughtfulness with which your uh, teachers think of, or your, your mentors and your, your assistant principals and administrators think of, of you as teachers. Uh, you know, it's, it's humbling. Uh, but at the same time, just tremendous appreciation for the work that you do. I'm a teacher myself. I know how challenging it can be, what difficult work it, it, it can be. Uh, it makes me all the more uh, grateful and uh, uh, appreciative of living in a district that draws people like yourself to it and wants to make you, uh, makes you want to stay here, you know, and continue to enrich our, our community. So I'm so appreciative for all of you, uh, but also for your assistant principals, your administrators who think so highly of you and who work so closely with you. 
can't say enough how, uh, how grateful I feel for uh, everything that you bring to the district. So congratulations to everyone. And uh, so reassuring to see what, what great hands our district is in uh, as, you, as you lead our students. So thanks again. So um, congratulations to you all. You worked hard to this point. I hope as an educator that you keep going on feverishly and take your tenure seriously. Um, the children, the parents, and the community are dependent on you. Congratulations. I just want to say, uh, I'll make mine brief. It's just going to be a congratulations. Um, you guys all very much deserve it. We are very privileged as a district to have each of you and privileged to be able to offer tenure to each and every one of you. Thank you guys all for the hard work that you do for our students in our district. And I'll just echo to say, yes, teachers are the heart of our school district. They're what, they're what remains teachers remain with the school district a, a long time and so um thank you for being kind of that the, the living like rich called lifeblood i'll say the beating heart and i think though there's some it's extra special that we have administrators who also take on that role in our district i think our district has a team of talented administrators and great hiring of administrators. And I think that Ken Lewis is one of those people, very special, um, to help make this whole school district work. So thank you for all of your, your talents and your work. Um, every day, I know it's one of the hardest jobs as, as an educator, former teacher, uh, uh, one of the hardest jobs in the world. So thank you for your hard work. Because it turns over to me. Uh, comments from the superintendent? I don't know what else to say. <laughs> uh, I think I had my say already. Um, you know, just it's fun to have a night like this, you know, and to have people here. And, you know, there's so many people here who aren't even up for tenure. They already have tenure and they're here just to support uh, the others. And that that's pretty impressive in itself. So that and I know uh, people have pointed that out. But that's pretty cool. You know, we have some people here maybe towards 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 the end, right? I was talking to one on the way in. I'm like, hey, you're getting tenure. Uh, people here working over 30 years. Uh, um, but yet they're here, you know, still uh, with, 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 you know, vigor and coming out to support the, uh, uh, you know, the new people and to have veterans and, 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 and non-veterans kind of become, you know, close. That's pretty cool, right? Because that's really what it's about. You know, that's really... That keeps you young, right, for the veteran, but also uh, helps out, out, out the, the newer person also. So it's a, it's a good it's a good relationship, and um, our teachers don't feel threatened by new people. They embrace them and they come and they support them, and we're all together, and that's great to see. So um, I'm gonna finish so we can get to the uh, cookie part. What do we have? <laughs> cookies. <laughs> all right. Cookies and pastries. All right. I I. Okay, so I believe what we're going to do now is take a recess to celebrate um, the staff tenure. And then um, we will afterwards, or we right now taking a vote to enter into executive session at approximately 8.30. Okay, so first uh, motion to recess. We need a motion okay. to recess first. So can we have a motion to recess um, to celebrate staff tenure? Make a motion to recess. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. I believe some of the audience voted on that one. <laughs>
I hope you're, are you taking down the price? I think I did. I 